Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using a clustered box plot in SPSS. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in the SPSS data editor fictitious data that I'll be using for this example. I have two independent variables, program and status, and one dependent variable named symptoms. Program this independent variable program has three levels, individual counseling, group counseling, and treatment as usual. And the status variable has two levels, voluntary and involuntary. So we have one independent variable with three levels and a second independent variable with two levels. And then, we, of course, we have this dependent variable symptoms. And let's say that we want to take a look at how these scores are distributed, including the presence of any outliers, across both these variables. Move to Graphs and Chart Builder and take a look at the available options here. And under Choose From, I'm going to move down to Box Plot. And you can see the first option is a simple box plot. And this allows us to place a variable on the y-axis, in this case it would be Symptoms, and one independent variable on the x-axis. So if I had program, for example, you can see there's individual, group, and treatment as usual. However, if I move status into this x-axis, I replace it. So program is gone, I just have the voluntary and involuntary levels of the independent variable status. So to get around this, we use a clustered box plot. So I'll drag that in, and you can see that I have the symptoms variable on the y-axis just as I had it before and the status variable but here I can specify another variable to cluster on X up here in this top right corner so in this case that's going to be program so I have status on the x-axis symptoms on the y-axis and then on this cluster on X section I have the independent variable program. So we know that program has three levels and status has two levels. So this will produce six separate box plots. So I click OK. And we could take a look at this clustered box plot. And we can see this is fairly small. So I'm going to double click on this. And the height by default here is 375. I'm going to change this to 600 and click apply and close and then close this. This can make it a little easier to see on the screen. So at the bottom we have voluntary and involuntary. That's the status independent variable. And up here in the top right we have individual group and treatment as usual, the levels of the program independent variable. And you can see they're color coded. So blue is individual, green group, and a tan, treatment as usual. So we can compare each combination of the levels of the independent variable using these box plots. We have each combination represented. Individual, voluntary, group, voluntary, and so on. Each combination is represented. And this box plot gives us information about how these data are distributed, specifically the symptoms variable. So taking a look at these box plots, we see there's, there are no outliers here. So an outlier would be marked as below or above these whiskers, so below the bottom whisker or above the top whisker. And the in this case, without the outliers, the whiskers represent the minimum value, the bottom whiskers, the minimum value and the top whisker is the maximum value. This colored area, this rectangle, this is the interquartile range. So the bottom of this rectangle is the first quartile and the top of this rectangle is the third quartile. The line here in the, in the rectangle is the median. So for example, looking at the voluntary level of status and comparing individual to treatment as usual, the median is similar, but the treatment as usual group has a higher maximum value. The top whisker is 
higher than the top whisker for the individual program level. So I'm going to move back to the data and change a few values to values that I suspect would qualify as outliers based on the distribution I have here in this symptoms variable. So for individual voluntary where I have 47, I'm going to replace this with 87. And for treatment as usual, involuntary, this value of 53, I'm going to change this to 14. And go back to graphs, chart builder, and run the same clustered box plot that I produced before. So I don't have to change anything here, I can just click OK. And it produces the six box plots. And you can see there's a couple outliers. I'm going to increase the size of this chart. And we can see here that the height, of course, set at 375, but I'm going to increase this to 1200. I'll make this uh, much easier to see. So we can see those outlying values. Close this, close this here. So taking a look at these box plots with these two values changed to be outliers, if we move here to the first box plot, we can see way up here above 80, at 87 to be precise, we have this star that indicates record four. And this indicates that we have an outlier for this combination of the independent variables. So the value 87, or record four, is an outlier. And it has this star instead of a circle. And they mean two different things here in SPSS. Same thing for the record 39 for this last box plot, except this is below the bottom whisker instead of the one here, which is above the top whisker. Both of these are stars. So this is an extreme outlier noted by the star instead of a standard outlier as represented by a circle. So if I move back here to the symptoms variable in the data editor uh, for individual and voluntary, this value 50, I'm going to change this to 68. 68, and I'm going to go back in and run the same clustered box plot. And again, I'm going to resize this box plot. And this time, I'm going to change the height from 375 to 2000. Make it even larger than before. Apply and close. And this gives us a little better view of this first box plot. And now that I've added this other value, I changed one of the values, this changes where this top whisker is, and it, it now makes it so that record four, the value 87, is no longer an extreme outlier, it's just a regular outlier. So what's the rule for determining if an outlier is an extreme outlier or a moderate outlier? We move down here to this first box plot. The determination of outliers here in, in the box plot is based on the interquartile range. So we take the third quartile, the top of this blue rectangle, and we subtract the first quartile. And this is the interquartile range. We multiply the interquartile range by 1.5 and add that to the third quartile. For a value to be a moderate or regular outlier, it's going to be outside that level. So this record four is greater than 1.5 times the interquartile range added to the third quartile. For an extreme outlier, it's three times the interquartile range. So we take the third quartile, subtract the first quartile, multiply that by three, and add it to the third quartile. That would be an extreme outlier. The same function is reversed for an outlier that's below the box plot. It's the interquartile range multiplied by 1.5 or 3, depending on what type of outlier you're trying to determine, and it's subtracted from the first quartile. 
Now this method is the same whether we're using a simple box plot or, as is the case here, a clustered box plot. The 1.5 times interquartile range rule or the 3 times interquartile range rule apply to all the box plots here. And in the case of the clustered box plot, what's really useful here is that we can have two independent variables represented. So again, in the case here, we had program and status and every combination represented on one chart. In this case, these six box plots. I hope you found this video on using a clustered box plot in SPSS to be helpful. Thanks for watching.